Welcome everybody to a quick video guide for Slay the Spire. What I'm planning on trying to do is a little guide for each of the three classes in the game to discuss kind of how they play, what cards to look for, and general strategies in terms of building them. For this video, we're going to focus on the Ironclad, or the first class, and if you guys like this kind of style, we'll do one for the Silent and the Defect. Now keep in mind that whatever I show you is going to be based on the beta build of the early access. So cards and their functions or values may not represent the current version of the game. But as we said, we're going to be taking a look at our first class here, the Ironclad. This is our, the I guess the warrior of the series or the game. And is built around a lot of strength based builds as well as weakening the opponents. All of the three classes in the game, and red is the basically the designation for all the Ironclad's cards. But the Ironclad specializes in doing a lot of damage and has cards that synergize with strength. Strength enhancements will add basically an additional point per strength to any of your cards. They're also good at applying vulnerable and is the only class in the game that can really make use of block as an offensive strategy. Now, the Ironclad can be built around either a few mega attacks per turn, or a lot of one and zero cost cards, and you'll find that for all three classes. But every class will have the same defend and strike cards from the get-go. So let's go down the line here, and we'll take a look at some of the cards and some of the big ones that I like to use. And then we'll go over to some relics and talk about them as well. The first card I want to turn your attention to is Armaments. This is a deceptively powerful card for an anti-ironclad strategy. At its base level, it just upgrades one card in your hand. But fully upgrade, it does all of them. This can be potentially over this can be potentially a uh, build breaking if your deck has a lot of power cards or a lot of cards that gain special advantages when they get upgraded. It also saves you having to upgrade cards at the rest sites. Now, besides that, the Ironclad has cards that are built around def using defense as an as an offensive strategy or just making it a lot harder to take damage. Body Slam is a biggie, and if you're going to make use of block and damage, this is a requirement, because it's the only card that really allows you to do that. But it synergizes with cards that can enhance how the Ironclad receives block, such as Shrug It Off, uh, over here with True Grid, which isn't okay, but by the fact that Exhaust cards can come back to bite you. But, Entrench is a really good one, doubles your current block, and that can pair really well if we come down here to Barricade, which means that block no longer expires, so it just keeps it, as well as Impervious and Juggernaut. In fact, Juggernaut combined with our card up here body slam can lead to some very powerful attacks where you're not really attacking the person, you're just using block against them. With that said, the Ironclad also has some decent bread and butter cards that you can make use of. Iron Wave is one of the few cards that does damage and bl adds block at the same time. Pommel Strike is their ability to add card draw and damage. And again, a lot of these cards you're just going to want to replace Strike with if you have the opportunity. Perfected Strike, if you don't want to do that, can come into play there. As well as cards like Twin Strike and... where was it? And Clash. Now another strategy the Ironclad has involves boosting its strength. And it has several cards that allow you to do just that. The first one, where is it? I just saw it. Here it is, Spot Weakness will allow you a guaranteed way of gaining strength as long as the enemy is doing an attack that turn. 
but one of the most powerful ways is Demon Form. Demon Form basically just gives you strength every turn, and it's a great ramping card for dealing with bosses. Now, one of the strategies that I like to use, or what I actually used to just do a win, was with this card. Where was it? Rampage. Rampage is a card that gains damage or gains additional damage every time you play it in combat. And th what that means is that this can be a powerful ramp for just about any battle. You can also combine it with cards that let you draw or add a card to your hand, as well as Double Tap, which lets you play an attack either once or your next two twice. That can be very powerful, especially considering that the Ironclad has some higher cost cards that can do powerful or increased damage, such as Uppercut over here, and where was it? Just saw Carnage as well. Basically, because of the high cost, you can use Double Tap to play those cards twice. The Ironclad can still make use of energy upgrades from relics or specific events. But, again, when it comes to the Ironclad, one final strategy that is kind of unique to them is the idea of purposely taking health damage in exchange for something else. For instance, you can have Blood for Blood, which causes less energy every time, sorry about that, you take HP loss in combat, you have stuff like Bloodletting, Combust, which can be very useful, especially when upgraded, and there is one other, uh, Hemokinesis as well. Again, the idea is that you're trading a little bit of health for doing a lot of damage. And the Iron Clan comes, or he begins, with a card, or I'm sorry, his relic, that gains health back on each turn. Come over here to the Relic Collection. Does it show it on here? Here it is, Burning Blood. So as long as you are doing less than 6 points of health per combat, you'll always be in the positive. But with that, that's I think a good segue to quickly discuss some of the great relics that synergize well with specific ironclad combos. And again, relics are completely up for chance in terms of whether you will find them or not. Vulnerable with Bag of Marbles can be okay, but if you're going to go for a block-based build, Bronze Scales, which adds Thorns, is a good one. Uh, Vajira here, which just adds one point of Strength. Strength is always great, and you really can't complain about it. If you're going to be making use of specific cards, such as Double Tap, Juggernaut, and other ones, you may want to guarantee them at the start of your hand. And that's what the bottled cards here are used for. Some of my favorite cards include Kanai and Shuriken, which play well with strategies around using a lot of low-cost cards for combat instead of the high ones, as they can be a great ramping effect. If you want to be making use of those powers, Mummified Hand is always useful for you. And as we go down here, Calibers can be useful if you don't get access to the Juggernaut. Or, I'm sorry, let me make sure I get the right name while we're talking here. Barricade. That keeps block on you at all times. Other than that... Whenever you apply Vulnerable, also apply Weak, can be very useful. And there's also several relics that enhance Vulnerable and Weakness. This actually blocks, which is an always a good one. Preserves your energy, another good one for everybody. But where was it? Maybe you see block. Uh, it could be a specific one, let's see. While I'm looking for it, you also want to keep your eye out for relics that give you energy. Especially if you're going for a high cost strategy. Because you will need that energy in order to play those cards. Hmm. I wonder if those relics were on the lower end of the field here. 
And then there are some relics that are specific to the shops. Let's see, here it is. Paper Froyer. Especially with the Ironclad gaining synergy from strength and having vulnerable as well, this can be very powerful for them. And Paper Crane is another given as long as you have weakness to use. One last card that I almost forgot about that I want to mention. If you're going for a high strength build, Heavy Blade is a must. Get your strength high enough and this card can easily do over 100 points of damage, making it a very effective boss killer. But, with that said, the Ironclad is really great again at dealing damage and using block as a weapon. Its main weakness is that it doesn't have really any kind of status affecting cards, such as Poison which means that they are kind of at a loss for an effective way of dealing with enemies that have high block or can keep putting block on per turn, such as the Act 2 boss that can add Metallicize, which is a card that you can get as well. But, with that said, the Ironclad, again, if you're looking for great strategies, the ones we've mentioned, such as the Strength Ramp Up, the Health Loss, but giving you something, and just using cards as, or using block as a weapon can be incredibly effective for you. And also, as a unique thing, the Ironclad is the only class at the moment who gets a power card that can just give them flat strength. So if you don't find stuff like Demon Form or Spot Weakness, you can still routinely get at least a little bit extra buff per combat. And Infernal Blade is another very useful one, if you can get lucky and grab it. But, with that said, we're going to wrap things up for now. Hope if there's any cards you'd like me to talk about more in another video, or if you'd like to see some general play, let me know in the comments below. But, while I'm finishing up, we're going to just slowly scroll down so you guys can get one final peek. So, thank you so much for watching this video. Like I said, if you like to see, or there is enough interest, we'll do one on the Silent and the Defect as well. And I've done plays of Slay the Spire on the channel as well. And as the game gets closer to be released, we will probably do more of it here. But anyway, be sure to check back for daily discussions on game design here, and on game wisdom where we examine the art and science of games. Until our next video, have a great day. Before we get to the credits, just want to give a quick shout out to the fans and supporters over on patreon.com slash gwbicer. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Check back around 10 Eastern for regular streaming. If you like to suggest games for me to cover or topics to talk about, let me know in the comments below. For a collection of my writings as well as weekly podcasts on design, check out game-wisdom.com. To support the Game Wisdom Patreon, you can find us on there on patreon.com slash gwbicer. A dollar will get you into our private Discord channel where we talk game topics and more. Five dollars will get you voting privileges for any major event, including the Saturday Night Grab Bag, Patreon-funded goals, and more. Thanks again for watching, and I hope you enjoy more videos here on the Game Wisdom YouTube channel.